How to make a candle that doesn't suck. In this video, I'm going to talk about things I wish I knew as a candle maker before I started. If you're new here, my name's Jason. I make videos all about making and selling candles online. When I first started candle making, I thought it'd be quite an easy process. Melting some wax, chucking in some scent, having a wick in a jar ready, and boom, you've got a candle. But there's quite a lot more to it. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to make a candle that doesn't suck. We're going to go over some points and lessons that I've learned over the last couple of years of making and selling candles. So here are the 10 lessons, tips and tricks that I've learned over the last couple of years in candle making. So number one, always test your candles before you try and sell them. It can be a long, arduous and frustrating process, but it's definitely worth it. You want to try different wicks, waxes, combinations, different jars, all that kind of stuff. Eventually, you'll get the perfect combination and the perfect candle. It just takes a lot of time. I think countless candles I've messed up before I've settled on a good one, trying to get good melt pills, trying to get a candle that doesn't burn someone's house down. It can take plenty of time, but it's definitely worth it. Here's my massive box of candle testers. No idea why I keep it, but it's good to look back. But some of these are my original candles, and you can see why it's a good idea to test your candles. Number two, don't settle on ingredients. For some reason, I stuck with um, C6 coconut soy wax for a long time. The scent throw was really good, but there was a lot of frosting and wet spot issues, despite loads of testing, different temperatures, um, trying lots of different things. It just didn't make a candle I was happy with. So only after a lot more testing with different waxes, I found the perfect solution. And now I've got excellent scent throw and great glass adhesion. So don't settle for ingredients just because you think you've kind of found the right one. There's plenty of opportunity to improve your candles. Number three, costing. Now, there's no point having the perfect product if it costs too much and you're not gonna make any money. So make sure you've costed all your base ingredients first, literally everything, right down to the box, the wick, all of it, to make sure that you can make enough money from it. Essentially, you wanna times the cost ingredients by about three or four to make sure you make some profit. So if your candle costs 10 pounds to make, it's gonna, you're gonna have to sell it for 40 pounds, which is a bit of a stretch to sell a candle for. Not impossible, but make sure you've costed your ingredients first. Number four, suppliers. You don't have to buy everything from candle-related websites. They do make it easy, but some of the things cost quite a bit more money than if you shop around. You can have a look on eBay, Alibaba, and I sometimes buy stuff from like um, beekeeping websites. That's where I get my jars from. They're a lot cheaper, about 60p a jar, compared to about £1.50 for some of the jars from, um, let's say, Candle Shack or Craftivator. So think outside the box, shop around. You can save yourself a lot of money. Number five, measurements. Make sure you weigh your wax and fragrance oil. Don't try and use the jug measurements on the side in milliliters. It's what I did in the beginning. Um, and luckily I did make some good candles, but you need to weigh everything. You can't rely on the sort of jug readings on the side. It will lead to a lot of errors as the wax weighs a different amount compared to like water or whatever you would put in a jug in milliliters. So weigh everything, don't rely on the jug. Number six, outsourcing. You wanna start trying to outsource stuff where you can. In the beginning, I was literally trying to make everything from handmade labels to go on the side to all of it. And it became a bit too much. My time was the bottleneck, especially whilst working a full-time job. So one of the first things I did was get some of the labels printed, some of the little gift tags sorted out. It does cost a little bit more money, but it saves me a lot more time. So outsourcing can elevate your business and then drive things a lot quicker and you can use your time more wisely, like creating the candles and marketing, things where you can put your time into better use, so outsource where you can. Number seven, don't compare yourself to others. It's very easy in the beginning to constantly compare yourself to others. Looking at Instagram makes it quite hard. You see everyone else doing nice fancy candles and you wish you could be like them, but you've got your own race and your own journey. It all just takes a bit of time. So try not to compare yourself to others, and focus on yourself. By all means, use Instagram for motivation, but instead of comparing yourself to others, spend that time planning. I like to use a whiteboard to get all my ideas out and just get a bit of a mind map, something I can tick boxes off. Number eight, research and development. There's so much information out there on YouTube, different forums, so I recommend subscribing to different channels, trying to constantly learn as much as possible, just take in as much content and surround yourself by like-minded people that are trying to do the same things. Um, there's yeah, literally no end to the amount of stuff you can learn. Different tips, different tricks. Sometimes you'll see someone doing something else and you go, ah, that actually makes a lot of sense. So just try and surround yourself 
with as many like-minded people as possible. Number nine, sales channels. You wanna pick a couple of sales channels and stick to them. Whether it's Etsy, Shopify, Amazon, just pick a few and just stick to them and make them work before you start trying to move on to different things. I always recommend starting like a Shopify website, trying to build your own brand so you've got a base point so you're not too reliant on something else in case you get banned or whatever. Um, or wholesale, just pick a few things and stick to it and then try and do them well before you branch onto other things. It's a marathon, not a sprint. All of these things take a long time. When you sort of look back at how far you've come, um, you'll see you've made a big amount of progress. In the beginning, everything takes a long time. It's tedious, you're learning how to make candles, you're learning how to market, um, social media, graphic design. You become a jack of all trades. So learning a few different things, progressing, it's all gonna take a long time. It might even take a year, two years, or three years. Um, and like the previous point, don't compare yourself to others. It is your own journey. So just keep plugging away, keep making steady progress, putting one foot in front of the other, and eventually you'll make it. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. See you in the next one.